Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch, and this is the third video in a seven-part series on building a full weather app using WeatherKit. In this video, we're going to greatly improve the appearance of our app by adding a background view that will reflect the current weather condition and add some mock data so that we can view the current weather and the time in other cities. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If you're working along with me, you can continue on from the source code that you completed in the last video. However, if you're just jumping in here and you want to work along, you can download the completed project from that last video. Make sure that you download the branch from video 2. I've already started a branch now for this video, and the completed source code for this video will be in that branch. Links to both branches are in the description. Remember that you'll need a developer account, and you will have to change the bundle ID to your own and make sure that WeatherKit is enabled on both the Capabilities and the App Services tab for the App Identifier for MyWeather. To start this video, let's drill down in the documentation for current weather once more. Currently, we are using the temperature. We are also using the condition, which is a weather condition, and that's an enum with a raw value of a string. And this description gives us the enum's visibility property, like cloudy or clear, etc. And the symbol name, which gives us the SF symbol, we use as the icon. What we can do as well, then, is display a background for our view that will correspond to each one of the enum cases. And there are 34 of them. And there's one more thing that we should look at. If I back out to current weather, I see that it has a date property. Currently, when we fetch the current weather, we're displaying the system date. And I think we should be using this date instead. So let's fix that first. In forecast view, where we display date.now, I'm going to replace it with the currentweather.date. And this is important because it is displaying the date of the forecast, not the current date. And I'll talk more about this a little later. Well, to save some time, I've asked Dal E images to generate some images that I could use as backgrounds based on the 34 different condition cases. And you're going to find those images in the resources folder that I've made available for this application. And you can download them from the link in the description. So unzip the folder, and in there you'll find a folder called Background Images with the 34 PNG images, all named exactly the same as the enum case's raw value. So in Xcode, in your app, open the Assets folder in your project, and create a new folder and call it Background Images. And then drag all of those images from the resources that I've made available into that folder. Now feel free to update these images to whatever you might think is more appropriate. I have to be honest, I didn't spend a lot of time on DALI images trying to get the best one. And you may find that some of them don't exactly display very well on the screen. So I'm going to leave that up to you. But this is a start. In the Other Views folder, create a new SwiftUI view and call it Background View. Import WeatherKit. And then create a property called condition that is of type weather condition. Stop the preview from complaining by passing in a condition of your choice. I'm going to choose cloudy. Now replace the body with an image using the condition raw value. Now the images are large enough that they'll cover the entire screen of any sized iPhone, so no need for resizing or scaling. In fact, don't do that. But I want to apply a blur modifier with a radius of 5, and then add a color multiply of white with an opacity of 0.8. I found that those two modifiers make the view a little bit less obtrusive and shows the text better. And you can play around with more of these image modifiers, but I find that they work pretty well. 
so you can see our forecast on top of the background. Now return to Forecast View, and after the padding on the V-Stack, we can apply a background modifier. And then within the closure, we can use an if statement to check that selected city is not nil, and unwrap the condition with an if let condition equals current weather dot condition, and use that condition to pass into our background view. I've also found that in light mode, the dark label text doesn't look particularly clear in some cases. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the preferred color scheme on this entire V stack to dark. Now, the only issue is that the Apple weather button is blue. So within the V stack for the attribution view, set the tint to white here as well. We'll soon be getting to the point where you can add and view the weather in any number of different locations and have them persisted to your device. But let's start with some mock data so that you can see your design work as we go. In the city model file, create a static computed property called cities. That's an array of city objects. And then I want to create at least three cities that are in completely different time zones and preferably at least one that's over the international date line. So for example, for me, I just went to the Maps app and searched for Paris, Sydney, and Washington DC, which are spread out around the world for me. So within the computed property for cities, I created an array and then just used the initializer to create those three different cities. Now in addition, I'm going to create a static property called Mock Current. That is a city and return a city that represents my current location. So for me, that's North Vancouver. So I'm going to use that latitude and longitude that I found in maps back in that first video. Now I want to present these in a modal sheet, those cities that will get presented from the forecast view. And when I select one of them, I want to update the selected city property that we have there which in turn will fetch the forecast for that view. And this means that we'll need to pass in the selected property as a binding to this view. So create a new folder group and call it cities list view. Inside there, create a new Swift file and call it cities list view. It's going to be presented as a modal sheet so we can use an environment property with the key path dismiss to create a variable called dismiss where we can then run the dismiss function. In this view, we not only want to display and update the selected city, which will be one of our mock data objects, but also the current city in case we want to get back to it. So we need to pass in two city objects to this view from our forecast view. And one is the current location and a let because we will not be updating it and it's optional. And the selected city, which is a binding, is an optional city. And then to stop the preview from complaining and letting us do the design work, we can pass in the city mock current for the current location. And for selected city, we'll just use a constant of nil. So let's start with a simple list that we will just display the city names. And when you tap on the item, it will update the selection. So I'm going to replace the body with a navigation stack. And then within the navigation stack, a list. And I'm going to set the list style to plain, provide a navigation title using the string my cities. And then I'm going to set the navigation bar title display mode to inline. Well, I want to display the current location first, but it's optional. So I'll need to use an if let to unwrap it. And then we can present a text view with the current location name property. We can add a on tap gesture to this. 
and then set the selected city binding to the current location in the closure and then call the dismiss function. So that's going to have the current location at the top of our list. For the rest, we'll use a for each loop that will iterate over all of the city.cities mock data array. And because city is identifiable, we can use that to give us a city, and then we can display a text view with that city's name. And then once more, another on tap gesture, where we can set the selected city, this time to city, and again call the dismiss function. And then in keeping with our forecast view, I'll set the preferred color scheme to dark. Now we'll be coming back to this view in the next video, but for now, that's good enough. But we'll need to return to forecast view right now to find a way to present the view. So I'm going to start by creating a Boolean property called show city list and initialize it as false. Next, I'm going to add a spacer in the VStack before the attribution view to separate them. Then after the background is applied, we can add a safe area inset with the edge being bottom. And within that safe area inset, I can create a button where the action is going to be to toggle that show city list. And the label for the button, I'm going to use an image with the system name list.star. And I can apply some padding. I'm going to set the background of the button to a color of dark gray. And let me make this preview a little bit smaller so that you can see it all appearing as I apply modifiers. I'm going to add a clip shape of circle and then apply a foreground style of white. And then add some horizontal padding. And then I'm going to set the button to the right with a frame of max width being infinity and an alignment of trailing. Now when we tap on this button, it will make show city list true, so we can use that to present a full screen cover where is presented is bound to it. And once we've toggled the show city list, we can present the city's list view where the current location is the location manager's current location property and the selected city is the binding to that selected city. So now right here in the preview, when I tap the button, the list is presented displaying the list of cities. And then when I tap on one of them, the view dismisses and that city and its weather are updated. There is one big problem though. This is not the current time for that city. This is the current time for my location. Well, in order to fix this, we'll need to determine the time zone for our selected location. Well, fortunately, the same for location geocoder function that gave us the locality for the place mark that it returned can also supply us with a time zone. So in the location manager class, we had another function with the same signature as the get location name function, but call it get time zone or the location, which is a CL location, and it's an asynchronous function that this time will return a time zone. Then we can let time zone be the result of trying and awaiting the call to the CL geocoder reverse geocode location, passing in our location function, getting the first one's time zone. And since this is optional, we'll return the time zone that we get. Or if it was optional or didn't exist, we'll return the current time zone. Next, we'll create a new group folder called extensions. And inside there, I'm going to create a new file called date plus extension. 
And here I'm going to create an extension for date. I'm going to create a function that I'm going to call local date, and it'll have one parameter, and that will accept a time zone, which is a time zone that we'll be passing in, and it's going to return a string, which will be the formatted date for that time zone. So in the body, we'll create a date formatter. And then I can set the date formatter's date style to medium. I'll set the date formatter's time style to none. And then the time zone to that time zone property that we're passing in. And then you can return the date formatter's string from self, which is the date that we will be applying to this function. Well, we can copy this and create a very similar function just for the local time. So we'll copy it and change the name to local time. Change the date style though to none and the time style to short. So now I can return to our forecast view and I'll create a new state property called time zone, which is of type time zone. And I'll initialize it as the current time zone. That's what it's going to be anyway when we launch the app and it looks at our current location. In the fetch weather function, after we get the current weather for the city, we can also update the time zone by awaiting the location manager's get time zone function passing in the city's CL location. And so once we have the time zone, we can finally change those text views that display the date and time with calls to our new date extension, local date, and local time functions. So it'll be a text view with the current weather dot dates, local date for the time zone, and the text view for the current weather's date dot local time for the time zone. So now if we test this and we switch cities, we'll get the correct date and time along with the current weather. Now there's one more thing I want to fix before we finish this video. Currently, the current weather gets updated every time you change the selected city, whether that be on the launch or when you tap on one of your cities. But what happens if you just switch to the background, go to another app, then come back to this app. It won't trigger a call to fetch the weather. It doesn't get updated. So to solve this, we want to make a call every time the app comes into the foreground if we were in the background. So in the forecast view, I'm going to create another environment variable for the key path scene phase. And I'm going to call it scene phase. And then we can watch for changes on this. So I'm going to create an on change of scene phase modifier after the full screen cover. Now we only care if when scene phase becomes active. So we will set the selected city back to the location manager's current location. And then we'll check to make sure that it's not nil by using an iflet. And we can create a task unit of work. And inside there, we can await the result of calling the fetch weather's async function for the selected city. That's it. Now, if your phone goes to sleep and it was woken up, or you return to the app when it was in the background, you can make sure that it is showing the latest weather for your current location. In the next video, we'll improve that list view and see if we can get some different types of weather forecasts, like an hour or a 10-day forecast. But for now, that's it. So if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And consider subscribing to my channel. Make sure that you tap the notification so that you'll be made aware when new videos are dropped. Thanks so much for watching.